This video shows you how to do several emboss relief techniques. I'm using a specific product from Stamping Up. You can also create your own emboss relief cardstock and it shows you at the end of the video how to do that. You can also use these techniques for scrapbooking as well as card making. Hi, it's Lisa. Today I'm going to be doing a technique video using some embossed resist techniques. I'm going to be working with a specific product from uh, Stamping Up, but you could do these same techniques with any type of embossed resist. Normally to do embossed resist, you take a piece of cardstock, stamp your image on it in Versamark ink, and sprinkle it with clear embossing powder and heat that up and you'll get a design that looks something like this. Now this is a uh, this cardstock from Stamping Up is very very it's got a very very shiny good emboss um, image and the inks and other things that we're going to use don't really stick to it very much at all so it's it's a good resist. Um, I had a product like this from Stamping Up a few years ago and I really liked it so when it was available in the celebration catalog I decided to get it uh, again this time. In that catalog it's called Irresistibly Yours Specialty Designer Series Paper. And they show it in the catalog with these beige images so you can see what the different patterns look like. Um, but it's actually, of course, the clear. And you could use it as is. It makes a pretty tone-on-tone uh, -tone design. But um, I'm going to do lots of embossed things with it. Now, I am not a Stamping Up representative. have no particular interest in selling their products. I just like using some of them. I don't use nearly as many as I used to. But I try to do an order every year during celebration. Uh, it's a good time to stock up on my card stocks and things that... Um, that I use and get something free. So you can see all these different little patterns, the stripes, the dots, um, the stars. They're 12 by 12 sheets. They're good and heavy. I think this is Stamping Up's normal white cardstock. I'm not sure. It's got a real smooth texture to it and then they've added the embossing on one side. And the last one is these shells. So you get 12 sheets in your pack for your free thing if you spend $50 or more. So that was my free thing this time, and I took one of the sheets and I cut it up into uh, four inch by five and a quarter inch pieces. So these will be card fronts, and so we're going to do lots of different things with them. I have some inks and mists and gelatos and pastels and all kinds of stuff out here, and we're actually going to get started, first of all, uh, with the pastels. Um, if you're going to be doing techniques like this, I recommend you work on a craft mat or some surface that you can clean up easy, have some sprayer bottles, and and definitely have some paper towels handy uh, to wipe up messes or clean your hands or whatever as you work. Now working first with the, the uh, pastels, this was an older product from Stamping Up and you can still get these kind of chalks at um, the craft stores. I think I've seen them at AC Moore uh, and probably some of the other stores, but they're just um, an artist chalk. And I'm going to kind of move some things out of the way here. I'm going to take one of these uh, cards and pick a couple of colors here. I think I may do some purple colors, kind of what I'm feeling this morning. I don't really have a particular plan for these. I just need to get some birthday cards and stuff going for the year so that I'll have stuff ready when think when for different birthdays and all roll around. And you can see this stuff resists really beautifully, and because it's a real smooth surface, it picks up the uh, chalk really, really well. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue up there. We're just going to do this one in kind of blues and purples. Let's see, I think I'll do a little bit lighter color pink on the edge. for a very feminine looking card here. Okay. Now, you can leave your chalks just like that. I think something though that's really pretty to do to them is to take a light colored um, glimmer mist. This is Tattered Angels. It could be anything with the glimmery uh, kind of finish to it. And this is a color called Iridescent Gold. I don't even know. I've had this a long time. I don't know for sure that they still make this particular color, but there are, um, you know, lots of light colored mists that you can use. And of course, if it has some color, it may change the um, 
the chalked part, this is going to go on very, very clear, but what it's going to add to it, it kind of softens the chalk colors, but it's going to add that glimmer. Okay. So what I need to do now is to let this dry. The glimmer part is not going to stick ultimately to this to the white raised area, but I don't want to wipe it off now because if I do, I'm going to start taking chalk off. <laughs> so I need to let because I've made the chalk wet, so it, uh, otherwise it would just start uh, everything would start coming off if I went over it with a paper towel. So I need to let the background dry really good, and then I can wipe off the excess that might be on that that white part, but you can see there's, there's a little touch of gold in this, uh, but it's mostly, you know, a, just the shine, and it makes a really uh, pretty finish for this. So we're going to set that one aside. We'll come back to it later. For my next card, I'm going to use some Distress Inks, and you can do the same thing with that I'm doing here with Stamping Up Inks as well, and I think, I think I'll take one of those. Um, let's try the more mustard or... It's a yellowier one. Crushed curry. I love crushed curry. It's an old color, but it doesn't matter. Stamping up inks, distress inks worry react a little bit better with water, but the stamping up dye inks work very similarly for this technique. So either one uh, will work. What I'm going to do is take some of these and just put them face down onto my craft mat. You've seen this technique, I'm sure, before. It's always good to have a reminder though to, I find, to remember to do some of the techniques that I like to work with. Let's see, I'm not going to get my yellow in there if I don't put it in here now. Alright, and this is where I need my water. Let that beat up and see how the Stamping Up ink is beating up as well. And we're going to take one of our cards, and I chose these colors for more of a fall kind of look. Because as I say, I need birthday cards and all for th throughout the year. This is soaking into the paper. You can even see the image coming through the back. The paper gets pretty soft when you do things to it here. And isn't that gorgeous? This paper just really works beautifully. Because a lot of times I have to go back over it a second time. I don't even know that I would need to. I've got a little corner here that didn't quite get any color. So I want to get something there on that corner. And maybe pick up just a little bit more green since I've got plenty right there. And But that just absorbed beautifully. So we've got a really pretty fall color. And then again, once this dries, then I might go over it with a paper towel. I could actually do it now, and I don't think it would hurt anything to just sort of blot it a little bit and pick up the extra ink that might be sitting on that white part. Just a little bit of extra ink in there. Gosh, that's just beautiful. Okay, so now we have some really lovely colors here for a fall card, getting very different looks just using different colors and different products on our cards. Now let's play with some gelatos. Gelatos are from Faber-Castell. They are like lipstick. That's the best way to describe them. They're in a tube. They kind of almost go on like lipstick on paper, of course, not on lips. And they give you this wonderful, rich color. So again, I kind of wanted to work with some purples. We've done purple and blue. What else can we do? You have to be careful, of course, when you mix colors because if you mix things that are opposite one another on the color wheel, they kind of turn into mud. So, like, I probably couldn't do purple and orange together, but I could do maybe some pinks along with it. Kind of getting similar colors to what we had before. I'm going to try a little bit of the silver in there. I could put red. That's awfully dramatic. I don't think I want to do that. Alright. Let's take one of our cards. Oh, and the gelatos come with these little brushes, so you're going to need a brush, and you're going to need some water, and the mini mister kind of water, the real small spray works really well for this, and I keep spraying myself by not having it turned around <laughs> the right way. Now, I'm just going to go over the card, some gelatos, 
lightly. They don't need a ton of it because it's going to spread. And the silver is one of the metallics. So let's see what happens when we add some of the metallic in there. There are a few other metallics. This one may be. This one is also, I think, a metallic. It came from the metallic set. All right, so I want to make sure yep, the brush is good and clean. All right, and then I'm just going to mini mist this. There we go. Good with water and start rubbing it in. And these colors will kind of blend together. You may need to clean off your brush if you don't want them overly blended. Especially when we get to the silvery part. And using gelatos on this smoother cardstock surface really helps because otherwise if you go directly over them over a real textured cardstock or one that's more coarse, um, they really tend to, the paper tends to grab them and then they don't respond to the water all that well. That looks really pretty and you can add a little more water. Clean paper towel here. And move that around just a bit more. I want to blend it just a little bit more. Okay. And as I hold this to the light, I am getting some pretty light with this, pretty glimmer with it. Not a ton, but a little bit. a little bit extra there and then we'll let that one dry. So even though I still use purples, I got some, a pretty different look than I had before. Okay, for our next card we're going to be using some mist and I have a couple of colors that are new to me from Heidi Swap. Uh, the mustard color I think is an older color. In fact, I found it on sale at Michael's and the citron is one of the newer colors. It's still been out for a few months. I just hadn't had it before. So we're going to play with that as my favorite color of Heidi Swap. It's mint green. They were out of this at Michael's. I think it had been on clearance, so i got to see if I can buy this somewhere. Because I've still got a lot, but <laughs> I love this color, so I will probably use it. And this is one of the newer colors, the navy. The navy is beautiful used in kind of small quantities. So we may have to do something separate with it, because I think these three are going to really go together uh, on a card. So I'm going to start with some of this new green. And let's, I'm going to keep doing my diagonal look. Ooh, I got lots of that, didn't I? All right, now the problem with blue and green is that they, or excuse me, yellow and green, is that they tend to mix a little bit. So throw that up there carefully so they don't mix too much. I didn't end up with enough of my new green, I don't think. I need, to, need some more. This is a very light, this citron color is. That's pretty. Now this is one you definitely want to take your paper towel and go over and absorb some extra there and get some of that off and kind of rub over it even while it's wet and that helps blend it in and get the ink off of your embossing. And this is where I find when I do my, my own embossing that it's it doesn't resist quite as much as it does on this paper, but it still makes a really pretty uh, finish there. So again, very different colors, and you kind of get different looks because you can see the sort of splattery patterns here that you don't have on something like the chalk. The chalk is a much smoother uh, finish. And then here, inks, which is very similar to using the sprays, but you're getting a, a, just a more muted kind of look than this is a crisper sort of look. Different looks, different products, uh, however you want to do them. Now I wanted to show you, I've got a scrap here of this navy, where I use some of the navy, because I wanted to show you that one, it's so pretty. Let's tear that piece of that off. Um, you can spray the navy on, but it's really, really dark. 
And so we spray the navy on and wipe a little bit of the excess off. And it's still, you know, it's a pretty color. But how I got this as opposed to this is I took a couple of drops of it. And a mister. And then I spread it with a paintbrush. That smoothed it out a little bit and I just got a little bit different look that way than I got with um, spraying. And I think I probably added maybe even a little more. But I just love this color. And let it drip a little bit if you want to. See, there, there we're starting to get some of the true navy part of it. So, regular mister bottle on there because it's easier. And you're starting to see some of that true navy on the bottom side of it when it dries. It's just a really gorgeous uh, color. So, anyway. Some fun stuff with that. All right, we got two more cards left. Have any ink refills lying about? These are um, pigment inks. Now you can use your regular uh, dye ink refills. You know, these are your, your Stampin' Up! Classic refills. These work great. Um, but I want to use up some of my uh, pigment ink refills. And I showed this on another video. I think it may have been a newsletter video. But I'm not, I don't remember if we did emboss resist with this or not, but we're going to do it here. What I'm doing is just putting a few drops down it, and in pigment ink you have to shake it quite a bit. It's just, it's thicker ink. It, it has some different properties. But for the purposes of what we're going to do, it will work. It just takes a fair amount of water. And these, of course, are some older things because Stamping Up doesn't offer this anymore. Um, some of these colors, like certainly Celery and Bashful Blue, are still, you know, our current colors. And I'll have some Sage Shadows and that really beautiful green that they had a long time ago. All right, I'm just putting them on my craft mat and I'm adding some water. And we're going to take our card and put it in the water. So similar to what you did with the ink pads, but this time you're doing the ink refills. And it doesn't take a lot. I probably put way more on there than I really needed. But isn't it beautiful? And you can let it drip because you get a lot of color, you know, a high saturation of color, more so than you have on the ink pads. Let's see, let's get a little bit of the green in that corner there. And I have enough here, I could easily do another card. I want to do something different with our last card, so I'm not going to end up using that for this. Now, let's take our paper towels. Let's see. Probably need a fresh one. And pull off some color. And of course, it actually left the dots of my paper towel here. I'm going to wipe that down. Get rid of those little dots. Isn't that pretty? Now, you can add more. You can go into it again. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. In a couple of places that didn't pick up blue before. Soften that up. Okay. All right. And we've got some really pretty color there too using the ink refills. So, ink refills are a wonderful bargain. Um, I don't, of course, get the pigment ones anymore, but I get the classic uh, ink refill. I've got quite a few classic ink refills, and I use them for all kinds of things. I use them for coloring, modeling paste, and lots of things. So um, I think the ink refills are a great deal. All right, let's do our last card. For our last card, we're going to do something really simple, and then we may add a little bit more. We may play a little bit more to it, but I wanted to do colors I hadn't really used at all before on these cards. I'm going to do some really bold red and orange. This is an older color of red. 
but it's still a beautiful color and one of my favorites. And it's not real bright red like real red is. So it's ruby red. That's just one of the older colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to put that on with some sponges. And then we're going to add some orange. I have to say, I wasn't sure about this red and orange. I thought it was going to be too bright, but it's really making a pretty card. Now the red stuck seriously to this, so this is the first one that's, that's not resisted this old red, ruby red ink. I don't know why. I'm going to take a little water. <coughs> oh, that's doing beautiful things to it, but not quite what I had planned. <laughs> Pulled it, it pulled some of that color off there. There we go. So if it doesn't resist properly, you can just pull some color off that way. Some water. All right. And that's really pretty. And something, of course, that's nice is to add some little drops on there. I have some purple dilute. You know, I was going to add some ink drops on it, but I'm not sure that I want to. That one is so pretty. I could add some navy. If I add some ink drops, I think I want to do something in the same color. Now when you add ink drops, they're going to resist on the resisting spots. So eventually, they're, they're never going to really dry on that, on those spots. So you got to let this dry, and once it dries, then you can wipe it down. But like this one and that one, those are going to eventually come off. So I'm just going to let that dry, and then we'll um, come back and look at it. Now we still have one, this one that we were working on earlier. Ooh red I need to get off here and we need to take our paper towel and kind of go over it so we pull any of the ink that was on the white part off. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Here's all six of our cards. This first one done with the stamping pastels, gelatos, using the various ink pads and water, mist. These were the ink refills. And then direct ink to paper and with a little bit of mist sprinkled on top. So now I'm going to turn these into six cards and we'll come back and take a look at those cards. Before we look at the final cards, let's just take a moment to see how you would create your own embossed cardstock. I started off with a piece of white cardstock. It's a very smooth cardstock from Stamping Up. You could use lots of different kinds of cardstock for this. And I have an old background stamp from Basic Gray that I've inked up with um, Versamark ink after I went over the paper with an embossing buddy. That's a tool to keep the uh, ink from sticking where you don't want it to stick. And I'm going to sprinkle some clear embossing powder over my cardstock and that'll stick to that design. Coat it really good and then just heat it with the heat gun. And it's hard to see, I know, on the video because it's hard to see in person uh, because it's just a tone on tone design. But it will, once you heat it up, it will turn nice and shiny and then you can use all the techniques that we learned uh, earlier and I'm going to show you a sample here of I did all the techniques on uh, some of this uh, cardstock so you can see a sample of what each one looks like. You'll see that the chalks, the first one up here at the top, they tend to stick 
more to the embossing than they do to the background. It creates a pretty design, but it's not as much of a relief design as the others. And then I did direct ink to paper and some mist. I have one, I think this is the Gelato's uh, one. And then I did the ink pads where we put the ink pad on the paper and put water on it. And then the bottom one was the ink refills. So they all create um, um, relief techniques with your own embossed cardstock. We have all six cards. I had a lot of fun doing these, just using lots of different uh, things. But they all have the same background, but then a lot of different foregrounds. And with a pretty background, I don't feel like I have to do a ton of stuff to the foreground. So I can just stamp something simple. Um, I did a separate little frame because I didn't really like what, the image that was inside that frame. So I, I used more appropriate words for what's going to be a birthday card. And just added a few little pearls. This one, of course, really simple stamped an image that I colored in. I finally used my silhouette to do print and cut. There's a little bit of edge that got cut here that I didn't intend, so <laughs> clearly I still need to work on that a little bit, but it, it, was, it was an interesting technique. I hadn't tried that. This is probably my favorite. Just used a few stamps. These are from Raisin Boat. Um, they're one of their uh, stamp sets, but you could use, you know, any kind of leaf stamps would look good with that. And I stamped off. I stamped the color on a scrap piece of paper and then onto um, my white background um, and then added so that it wouldn't be too dark when I was because I was going to put words on it and then went around the edge with some distress ink. This one I'm not sure about. The, the background was a little brighter and all and I had intended to keep it that way and then I decided to stamp my bird image on some um, music paper and add distressing and suddenly I had a more vintage uh, looking card so I added a little bit of I think it was uh, rusty hinge distress ink around the edge here and uh, and then put some trims and stuff on it so it's okay you know again very some very different looks here maybe for a fall birthday um, and then this is the one that we did with the ink refills so just a stamped and um, punched image. This is the only one I think that has any designer paper on it. This is one of my favorites uh, with some brighter colors and I'm going to send this one to an April birthday and I've got a couple of here that are going out for February birthdays. So I have some cards already made up now for the year. And that, not all that I'll need, but several that I'll need um, just with one sheet of 12 by 12 um, pattern or paper that has the embossing on it. You could do the same techniques, of course, with using doing your own embossing process with a background stamp, emboss uh, with Versamark and clear embossing powder, and then use your inks and um, miss and however you want to do your background. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you can see more projects over on my blog. The address is on your screen and um, I hope you'll come back again.